infrastructure money, often people say, well, where would that come from? The UAE. Syria and it's, you know, Russia and other problems. Um, but, you know, fortunately... What we understand from people there is the ISIS thought a bit, the conversations are getting more productive, more constructive. We're very supportive of that. We'd like to see, um, you know, some, some concrete results. I know that uh, Special Envoy Griffiths is moving in that direction. So our sense is that there's a good spirit of cooperation. Um, of course, the last round in Geneva, the Houthis weren't there. They're here today. Uh, we're picking up, um, you know, hints of good, good momentum. It's important that they sit on the table and they compromise. Whoever is not going to compromise this time in, uh, in, in Sweden will be punished by the people because supporters will not continue to come on and fight and fight and fight. Because you reach to a point where you say enough is enough. And I think this is the, the breaking point. Particularly strong. What that means is... My question to... One of the biggest setbacks is that the legitimate government has not performed well. So you're falling in the trap of supply and demand. They have not filled that uh, demand, whether in the liberated areas or in other areas. And that's what makes the Houthi strong. So if we are to have a peace process, and if you are to have uh, a reconciliation government that will include everybody, that's where the test is. Disarming climate change, so the very big multilateral issues. The is that we have is that these guys are a fighting machine. They survive the fighting. Because right now, you only have one guy at the block, and that's the Houthis that are in, the, in those areas. No competition to them. And that's, it's difficult to say what do they want. Of course, they would not tell you what they want, because they want to go as much, they want to have as much as they can. And that's why we have to be realistic about getting negotiations moving. And I'm sure they understand where the limit is. And what do we have to do in context like Yemen. You're going to run into all kinds of conflicts. I would add a fourth. The pressure is strong. There's no question about it. A number of factors have led to that point. Uh, the pressure has been building for some time. Uh, we engage regularly with members of Congress, their staff, to talk about Yemen, to do briefings. Secretary Pompeo, Secretary Mattis both briefed uh, the Senate about two weeks ago. There'll be more briefings coming down the, coming down the line. There is a sense that what's driving this is the concern about civilian casualties. That's a uh, responsibility on both sides in this conflict. Uh, we have the slight advantage of being able to work with the coalition to try and imp uh, implement mitigation measures that would lessen the possibility of civilian casualties, but there's no doubt that more needs to be done on that front. Uh, we'd like to see that uh, unity restored, uh, not on our terms, uh, but on terms of the countries that are involved. And uh, it's important not only for uh, the GCC to be a strong bulwark against uh, Iranian influence in the Arabian Peninsula, but also to allow us to capitalize on economic linkages that can, uh, you know, add development to the region and that can help. Uh, help the countries bind together. Uh, so we are, you know, pleased to see the GCC meeting uh, today. We're looking forward to positive outcomes.